welcome everybody to episode seven of the vlog slash podcast from Fletch here at All Things Overlanding. Um, on this episode and the next couple of episodes, I'm going to be taking a slight departure. So for those of you that are like me that enjoy uh, recording your adventures, a lot of the questions that I see from day to day on my videos, um, some of them that I get through my website, are things like, you know, what kind of camera do you use? What kind of audio equipment do you use? Um, again, thinking of myself sort of more as a budget-minded overlander, there are a lot of ways that you could spend a lot of money on some camera equipment. So, again, the things that I'm going to show you are going to be, one, inexpensive. That's my goal. Um, and then two, please keep in mind that I am an amateur too. So the way that I would tell you kind of my background and my story is that, you know, I got into overlanding maybe about three or four years ago. Uh, I purchased a 2005 Nissan Xterra because I'm a Nissan guy and I started taking trips. And as I started to take more and more trips, I started to realize, one, I wanted to, you know, take some cool pictures. I was going to a lot of neat places. I was seeing a lot of cool stuff. Um, you know, again, I'm a car guy, so I liked seeing the truck, you know, overcoming difficult obstacles and things like that. Uh, started a Facebook page, started an Instagram page, eventually created a website and started to write blogs and things like that on there. Um, and then finally got into YouTube as well. And... Once I got into YouTube, you know, for the first couple of years, I was very sort of hesitant to be on camera. And it was just kind of like, hey, here's the truck driving into the woods, or hey, here's a campfire, that kind of stuff. Um, so if you go back into the archives and watch some of those early videos, I apologize. They're, they kind of make me cringe now that I watch them. But there's, it's still the history, right? So it's it, you grow, and with each video, I feel like things get a little bit better. Um, so again, that's my goal as well. So to share as much good information with you guys as possible, but also then for me to continue to grow and share better and better information each time. Um, so again, thank you. Let me start by saying thank you so much for listening to the podcast, for watching this vlog. Uh, Again, it's going to get better every time, but on this first one, like I mentioned, the next few are going to be sort of more related to video slash photography slash audio. Um, so again, on this one, I'm going to be talking more about um, photography specifically. But so today on the episode, we're going to talk about, you know, in my opinion, from an amateur's point of view, the most important things that you could learn really quickly that can save you a lot of that time that it took me to kind of get to the point where I'm at now um, regarding photography. So we're going to talk about three main things. And again, keep in mind, I'm an amateur here. So if you're a professional photographer, you know, feel free to comment below. But if I'm doing some things wrong, you know, I appreciate that feedback as well. I think a lot of these things are kind of general basics for getting started with photography. So I think that they'll be helpful for everybody. Um, but so on today, we're going to talk about a few different pieces in this episode. So the first one is going to be equipment and how to get the best possible pictures with, you know, maybe either inexpensive or even just equipment that you've already got. Um, the second part of what we're going to talk about is going to be composition of your shot. So when you're talking about photography, the way that you lay out the shot, the way that you, you know, you use your perception to pick out what is the subject of the shot, composition is extremely important. And we'll get into that in more detail here in a second as well. And then the third part of what we're going to talk about is probably the next most important thing after composition, which is editing. Um, and kind of how I do it, I'll show you some some tips and tricks on kind of how I do it with some inexpensive or free software. Um, so yeah, I will go into more detail on that. So now that we've kind of got the bones of what we're going to be talking about, I'm going to dive right into the first part. Um, again, before we get too deep into it, if you're new to the channel, please, you know, check out the rest of my videos. There's a ton of stuff on here. I have done quite a few gear reviews of uh, photography, videography, and audio equipment with more to come. Um, so feel free to check out some of the other videos. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Um, there's a button over here to subscribe to the channel. Um, also, as I mentioned, this is both a vlog that I put up on YouTube and a podcast. So if you go to any of the major podcasting channels and just search for All Things Overlanding, you'll find me on there. Picture of a tent with the logo on it. That's the, that's the one. Feel free to subscribe there and listen on the podcast as well. So yeah, that's it. Now we're going. Let's go. So the equipment. Let's start on that. Um, 
again, I've mentioned it a few times, but I want to further reiterate that I'm an amateur, right? So I'm just a guy that goes out and I take trips and I like to take photos. Um, throughout the video, I'm going to kind of pop up some of the pictures that I've taken to kind of illustrate some of the points that I'm making so you can see what I'm talking about and I can kind of put some proof into it to show you how far I've come from when I first started. Um, you know, I would say when I first started, and this is an important point, especially for, you know, you if you're new, I did what 99.9% .9 of people do. I would go out into the field. Maybe I would, my truck would be up on a cool rock or something, or I'm making some cool, you know, climb up a hill. I would put the park, the truck in park. I would go behind the truck. I would stand at, you know, full height, just eyeballs straight on the truck. And I would go boom. And I would just take a picture with the truck right in the center. Um, and again, not to say that there's something super wrong with that, but that picture one has been taken a million times, right? So everybody takes that picture. Everybody holds their phone up and a lot of people hold it up, you know, vertically instead of horizontally. So that's that's a tip that I'll get to here in a second when we talk about composition. Um, but so I have a smartphone. Mine's a, an iPhone XR. It takes great pictures uh, for what it is. And I, I highly recommend that, again, it, versus not taking any pictures, use what you got. If you've got an old, you know, DSLR, awesome. If you know how to use it, even better. I'm not a DSLR guy. I'm not ever going to try and be a professional photographer, but I'm going to try and take the best shots that I can with what I've got. Um, so, you know, starting out with that, my iPhone XR is kind of my first piece of equipment that I use almost every single trip. It's, it's kind of, for pictures especially, that's what I use. I do have a DJI Osmo Pocket, which I use for a lot of video because it's a three axis gimbal, so it's stabilized. But we'll get into that on a future episode when we talk more about video. So for photography, I like to use the phone personally. You can take pictures on a pocket and they take great pictures for what they are. But again, it's it has a tiny screen. It's kind of hard to see. It's just easier to take a picture on the phone. Um, there are a number of pieces of software that you can get for the iPhone. Uh, and I'm sure they're the same for, you know, Samsung or Motorola, Android phones, whatever you happen to be on. Go to the uh, to your store and look for photography apps. Um, watch YouTube videos and see if somebody has a recommendation. Again, I'm speaking specifically about the iPhone today. The app that I use for a lot of my photography is, you know, sometimes I'll use the default app. It's fine. It does okay. Um, the one that I really like to use, though, is called ProCam. Uh, the logo is kind of a white background with like a rainbow kind of circle on it. Uh, I'll post a picture of it here in the video so you can see what it looks like. Um, it's a free piece of software, which is great. But the thing that I like about it is it gives you additional controls manually over the camera and your phone. So you can control ISO, you can see washout. So uh, there's like a little bar over on the side and I'll try and take a video of my phone after I'm done recording this to put over top of it. Um, there is like a, a little bar to the side and you can dial it in and up to see, to change how much light basically is coming into the camera and to see uh, like this light right now, this key light, the main light that's kind of on my face. If I was looking at it through the camera, it might show like this part of my face is wash, washed out or, you know, if there's a reflection on my glasses, which is possible, um, that may show there too. So um, that just helps you kind of, again, with the, the arrangement of your shot, it helps you see, you know, where too much light's coming from. You could change your position. You could go higher. You could go lower. Um, so that software will help you take better pictures, basically. So check out ProCam for sure. Again, it's a free one. They're not paying me or anything. It's just, just a free piece of software, but I use it and I do like it quite a bit. Um, so yeah, so that is kind of the bulk of the equipment. So I use my iPhone for pictures. Um, I have taken pictures with the D DJI Osmo Pocket. One neat thing that the, the Pocket will do is it will do a three by three pano panoramic picture. So you just basically set the thing down on its little tripod and you just hit start, and then it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'll put a couple of those pictures up on the screen now so you can see what those look like. But it just creates like sort of almost like a fisheye lens look, and you get a huge swath of information into one picture. Um, so you can do that. And again, it's it's not the worst thing in the world, but for just straight photography, I like to use my phone. Um, another thing is before you go on like a trip or a shoot, if you will, um, be thinking about your storage space. <clears throat> so I always try to go in and clean out my uh, my storage space, move everything over to my computer or my hard drive before I leave so I've got plenty of room because that's the beautiful thing about digital photography nowadays. It's not like you have a limit. It's not like you only have three rolls of film like we used to in the old days. Now you can, as long as you have storage space, you can just keep taking pictures. And I tell you what, that's one of the best things that I've ever taught myself was don't be afraid to take too many pictures. You will definitely come home sometimes and say, man, I did not get enough video. I did not get enough B-roll. I did not get enough 
photos of the vehicle or the spot that I was at or this, you know, national landmark, but you'll never come home and say, man, I took way too much. Like, oh, I have all these pictures. This is terrible. You, having more is always better. Um, so pay attention to your storage for sure on the, on the phone. We are now going to be talking about composition. Um, composition, as I've mentioned previously, is basically the way that a photo is composed. Okay. Um, the cool thing about it is you can have the fanciest camera in the world, but again, if you're taking that eye level shot and you're just taking the same shot as everyone else, it's not going to be as interesting as someone with an iPhone taking a really cool, interesting shot from a different angle or a different position. Um, so composition is, again, in my opinion, the most important part of photography. Um, I personally would rather have a picture that is well composed and maybe not nearly as good a quality um, as a shot that is has the best quality in the world, but again, is is not well composed and is just boring to the eye. Um, so again, when you're talking about composition, the first tip that I can give you is what's called the rule of thirds. So in your default app for the iPhone, you can go into settings for the camera and there's a, a, an option called grid and you can check the box for that. Um, once you do that, it turns on this grid that has two lines going up and down and two lines going across, kind of like a tic-tac-toe board. Um, kind of one of the rules of photography is that the human eye likes to see things in those thirds, right? So like, let's say down here on this corner of my lines here, right? So like, this is my face down here. You want to try and pick where those lines intersect and put your subject on one of those four points where the lines intersect. The reason is just for the human eye, it draws your attention to that. And again, I'll put up some pictures here that I've taken just to kind of show you what I'm talking about uh, as far as that's concerned. Um, but so be thinking about that. If, if your subject is your vehicle, for example, and say I'm standing back and there's, you know, the woods are out here and your truck is straight ahead of you. Instead, kind of move over to the side and try and get it down here where these two lines intersect. Okay, try and get them where the lines intersect and then show lots of forest. It's kind of like an establishing shot if you think about that. So like your truck is here, but then it shows so much of the background around it. And it just makes it infinitely more interesting than, you know, just a straight on shot of the vehicle. Um, another example of a way to compose a photo is perspective. So again, I've kind of touched on this a little bit, but not really in depth. So most people, again, just take a straight on shot. A lot of them take it as a vertical shot. Here's the thing, there are times when you should use a vertical shot. And I'll put some pictures up here to show you what I'm, what I'm talking about there. A lot of the times if I'm, say, behind my truck and the sun is up out here and there's all these trees all around, I will get really close up on the truck and I will take a vertical shot from down low looking up at the truck and then capturing all the trees around it. So again, pictures here so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but for the most part, most of the time you want to take a horizontal shot because those vertical shots, one, they don't really line up great for a lot of social media platforms. So if you are going to be sharing it to Instagram or Facebook or anything like that, it's going to be a weird, tall picture. Um, the same applies to video. Vertical video, people hate vertical video. It's just as soon as you see it, it, it looks amateurish. It doesn't look professional at all. Um, and it just turns people off. So people don't want to see that. It's why right now I'm shooting this on my phone, on my iPhone XR, and it is horizontal. It's not vertical because I want that video to fill your whole screen and to make it as pleasing to the eye as possible. Um, so think about your perspective when you're taking that shot. Think about if you're going to do vertical, why are you going to do vertical? And what's your goal with that shot? If you're going to do horizontal, where's the vehicle? Where are those grid lines like we talked about? Think about the composition. But again, don't just take a shot straight on of the vehicle with it in the middle. Take it on one of the crosses of the lines. Take it from behind something. So again, I'll pop up some pictures here of things like that. Just putting something in the foreground makes the shot, again, infinitely more interesting to the eye. It also kind of gives you a, a feeling of professionalism for the shot. So again, I'm popping up some pictures here so you can see that. Um, so, but that's important. So just don't just get out and just start taking pictures willy nilly of your stuff. Think about your shot. Think about the perspective. Think about getting up high. Think about if you've got a selfie stick, not taking a selfie necessarily, but using the selfie stick to get it up really high and take a picture down on the truck, say on a hill that's, you're getting ready to go down a big hill. It would look way more cool to have this picture from up high showing the whole entire roof of your vehicle and then this, you know, landscape laid out in front of it than just me standing maybe beside my truck and taking a picture or behind the truck and then you can't even see the drop off on the other side. Um, so again, think about the perspective a lot. And then the third piece of composition that I will tell you is timing is everything. So 
you know, in the middle of the day, you've got a lot of sun. Um, one of the things I reviewed, I'll throw a, a tag up here for it, um, is ND filters that basically block out some of that light. In the middle of the day, it's going to be super bright. So it's going to wash out your photos. It's not going to look as good. It's not going to look as professional. But if you wait until twilight, you know, dusk, um, so like first thing in the morning or, or the end of the day, those two times a day, the sun is setting, the colors are popping in the sky. You can get infinitely better pictures from there. So I'm going to throw up some sunset sort of pictures here that I've taken. Um, and again, not a professional photographer. Tear me apart in the comments if you want. That's fine. But I still think those pictures look so much better than like a midday shot. So, and I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. I've really been trying to train myself on how to take better photos, how to make my Instagram better, um, that sort of stuff. Again, not it's not a vanity thing. It's just I want to share great content with you guys, and I don't want it to look crappy. I don't want to just take a picture of a tire and be like, there's my new tires. You know, like that's not my goal. My goal is to show you guys cool, interesting stuff that you're going to like, and that's going to make you want to engage with it, right? That's going to make you want to get into overlanding. That's going to make you want to meet new people and get out there and try new things. Um, so think about the time of day and try and time your stuff out. If you're going to be taking a trip and you know you're going to be hitting this really cool landmark, try and hit it around, you know, dusk when you can take the best possible pictures of it. So we've only got a couple minutes left here. So I do want to dive into the final third part of this vlog slash podcast. Um, that's going to be editing. So we mentioned it there. I'm going to try and screen share from my phone how I use uh, the app that I use for editing. So there are a few of them and I'll link to them all down below so that you can get quick access to them. Um, but the main one that I use, it's free for the phone. It's not for the desktop. You have to buy it. And if you can, I definitely recommend buying it because it's a great app. The problem is it's an Adobe product. So you have to pay a monthly subscription. You can't just buy it once and then keep it. You have to continually pay every month, which is why I don't really pay for it. And again, it's free, limited, but it's free on the phone. Um, so now I'm going to show you on the phone as we go kind of what I'm talking about. So um, basically when you're editing, there are a few things that I always do when I'm editing my pictures. Um, one of which is first you have to import it into Lightroom. So I'll show you that here. Um, once you've you know uploaded that picture into Lightroom, then the next thing that you want to think about is the composition. So again, let's say that you were a little off in your shot. Let's say it didn't quite line up with the lines and you don't like it. You can use cropping to make the picture look a little bit different. So you could cut a piece out of it. If you've got way too much room over here on this side or when way too much sky and you want to cut it down, you can do all those things with editing. Um, so think about your composition, think about your subject of the shot, um, and then try and get that focus drawn to the subject in the shot. Um, so there are a number of opinions and videos, and again, I'm going to link to several of my favorites down below, um, but there are a number of different ways that you can edit photos. And really the best advice I can give you is just to get something like a Lightroom or find something that you like um, from an editing software standpoint and start playing with it. Um, tips that I could tell you is at first I went really super dramatic with my photos. I felt like, oh, if I'm going to be professional, I need them to be really sharp and crisp and, and really... Um, I need to put like a big blur around my truck so that the truck is the only focal point, but then it kind of looks like you're looking down a tunnel or you're going blind or something. Um, if you if you do a ton of editing to a photo too, a lot of the times it can degrade the quality of the photo and make it super grainy. Um, so just be careful. Like don't go crazy. Don't If it seems too extreme, if the sky is bright orange and your vehicle is bright green or blue or whatever color your vehicle is, maybe that's too much. Um, so if you're going to go crazy with it, just always have in the back of your mind, like maybe that's too much. Maybe I should dial back a little bit. Um, so diving into Lightroom now and showing you this. If you're watching the video, it'll be easier to see. If you're listening, then I'll try and describe it for you so that it's as useful as possible. So when you have the Lightroom app up on your phone, you've uploaded your images, you click onto the image, and on, when you're looking at that image, a number of options pop up at the bottom. There's some really easy sort of almost hacky, cheaty ways to do this. Um, one that I like to use and I think is underrated is you'll notice an option at the bottom of the app that says auto. You click that and it automatically resets the photo to the defaults that, that the app thinks make the photo look the best. And I find that 60, 70% of the time, I'll often do very little editing past that point. I'll hit auto. It'll make the colors pop a little bit. It'll make it a little bit more vibrant. Maybe what I'll do then is I'll go into, there's an option that says effects at the bottom and there's a vignette option. That's about the only thing that I use in uh, in those options. 
there's vignette. If you pull it to the right, it makes a white vignette around the edge. And a vignette is just like sort of like a, uh, like a faded color circle around the center of the image. Um, if you pull it to the left, though, it makes a black vignette. I personally don't like the white vignette. I go for a black vignette every time, so I pull it to the left, just varying. Not enough that it, it becomes obvious. Again, if, if you notice it and it's super noticeable, then you've probably gone too far. Just enough to kind of make the corners just slightly dark. So again, it focuses you in on that the truck or that landmark, whatever your subject is. Um, so, you know, the auto button is a great option in effects. There is the vignette option. I pull it to the left to make it darken things. Um, and then the final sort of simple, simple amateur tip that I'll give you is if you scroll all the way to the right at the bottom of the app, there's an option called presets. And in there, they're basically LUTs. If you've done any research on photography or videography on YouTube or anything like that, um, LUTs are light or lookup tables, lookup tables, which basically changes the way that the, that the, that the video looks or the picture looks. Um, these presets are essentially similar to LUTs for video, where you just click it and it automatically changes a number of the options to make it look a certain way. So there's one that's like vibrant and it'll make your greens pop in the grass and the blues pop in the sky. I use that one quite a bit or vivid. It's either vivid or vibrant. Um, so just play with those presets. Click on a couple of those, see which ones you like. You'll probably find one or two that are your favorites. Um, but so don't hesitate to use those things. Again, just taking that extra step, doing anything above and beyond what most people are just gonna stand up and go click and take a picture. If you do any sort of editing whatsoever, then you're miles ahead of everyone else. Um, and the last kind of tip that I will talk about for editing, what I use for all my videos on my channel for like the picture that I use for my thumbnail is a software called Canva. If you go to Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com, and I'll put a link down below for you. If you go to Canva dot com, it's a totally free software where you can drag and drop in your own video or own pictures. You can throw images over it. You can throw shapes over it. You can find icons and things like that. Um, so if you're doing things for social media and you want to just really quickly and easily without having to learn a whole new software or Photoshop or anything like that, check out Canva dot com throw your picture in there, throw you know a gray box over it, make it less transparent or more transparent so that you can see the image through it, drop some text on top of it, and boom, you've got a really cool, much more professional looking picture than you would have without that stuff over top of it. Um, so definitely check that out as well. So again, we're kind of out of time. I don't want to go too long because I want this to be something that you can consume you know, on your commute to work. Um, I hope this is helpful. Um, I definitely would appreciate it if down in the comments below, particularly on YouTube, leave a comment and let me know if you like this kind of stuff. Um, I'm kind of, I, I wanna stay true to you guys and talk about overlanding stuff. I'm gonna continue to do a ton of gear reviews for camping stuff, things like that. I've got a trip coming up in about three weeks where I'm gonna be going to West Virginia um, for about four days. So there's gonna be a ton of trail footage and things like that coming up. Um, so don't get me wrong, don't think that this is turning into a 100% video photography audio channel, but I do feel like a lot of overlanding channels are kind of just about overlanding, which is cool and it's great, right? I, I, I want you guys to get information about overlanding, but I feel like there are also a lot of people that approach me and say, I wanna record my travels like you do. You know, I wanna have a YouTube channel. I wanna throw it up and share it with my family and friends. Um, I wanna take great pictures of my truck so that I can have those for, you know, 10 years from now when I have, I'm on my third truck or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so again, I just wanted to share that stuff for the next couple of these. I will probably focus, you know, next one on video and then maybe the one on after that on audio so that you can capture better audio when you're out, you know, shooting B-roll in the woods or shooting stuff uh, on site or doing gear reviews, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, please like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you think of the video. Let me know if this is kind of content that you guys want to see. Um, again, if you have suggestions and things like that, I take those extremely seriously and I'm looking for that sort of stuff. I want to make videos that you guys want to see. So please post up down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Check out the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, check out Facebook and Instagram. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope this was helpful. Like I said, and, uh, as I always say, get out there, live, learn, discover, check out your environment, have fun. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one. Take care. Yeah.